right there. Recording in progress. All right, we are officially underway. So what up YouTube? You guys get me right as I crack my first beer. I forgot a beer opener. So we're going with the crazy goofy cocktail spoon. No, we'll go, we'll go with the box cutter. Box cutter from Jeremy's. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. All right, so hopefully some more people will jump in here uh, shortly. They usually do as this gets going. Um, I've been actually playing around with moving the show a little later. I've gotten, right, I'm stubborn. I've gotten plenty of requests to move the show later uh, because it's pretty early, um, right? Arizona and then the entire West Coast, it's four. So like shout out to you four o'clock drinkers over on the West Coast. Obviously, East Coast folks, you guys are good. It's seven, Central, six. That's not that bad, but then, you know, it's a little early for the rest of the folks. So I may bump this show a little later. We'll see. Um, generally speaking, I'm an early morning person and I go to bed early. Um, but as the show has continued on and, and been a success, I've been very excited about it. So like, what do we got to do to grow the show? You know what I mean? So I'm thinking next week we'll go one hour later, see how she goes. But anyways, without further ado, so tonight's episode is brought to you by Inflatable Office. If you guys jump in the comments, you'll see uh, a big long thing I posted in there about tonight's episode. But if you guys want to see what their websites look like, um, so, so they're a rental software provider, right? For anybody doing any sort of rentals. So you can do bounce houses, obviously. And then you're going to have, uh, maybe you've got party rental, maybe you've got phone, maybe you've got anything, uh, a video game truck, whatever. They can provide that for all of you. So if you want to see what their websites look like, go look at mine. Um, I have tink tinkered with mine over the course of the last two years. So it's hopefully getting perfected. It's still got a long way to go, of course. Um, and then if you are interested in having them be your internet or sorry, your uh, rental provider, there is a link in there that yes, it is my affiliate link with them. But if I brought you any value, which I always try to do, then use the affiliate link. I get paid a little bit of money, which is cool. So, um, all right, let's get all these peeps in. All right. So if you guys have questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, we got Michael Rydell out in Facebook land. Hello. What's up, Michael? Shout out to you. Um, let's see what's going on in TikTok. TikTok, this is the first time I've ever done this live. So I got, hey, yo, what's happening from F350? Sam Millers, what's up? Um, who's the best salesperson you have ever met and what made them good? That's a good, that's from great screen name is the name. That's a good one. We got Mississippi in the house. So uh, we're doing good, man. We're doing good. Um, and then zoom link yes so if you're on youtube the zoom link was supposed to be in there on 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 youtube if it's not i apologize i don't know why it's not but for yo those of you on youtube um the let me see dude i might be able to tell you the uh, i'm not sure man i'm not sure yeah i'm kind of on the fly and i do this all by myself i'm on the ones and twos and i'm the mc so i'm not sure what the zoom link is um, but you can go find it. If you can go find me on Instagram, it's in my bio for sure. I know it's in there. So anyways, um, so what I like to do when we first start out uh, these booze and biz shows is kind of get going on a little bit of uh, where uh, if you guys have questions, you can unmute, you can ask them, you can ask them in the, in the comments and we'll get, we'll get rolling. Um, tell everybody about Florida, about roll off straps. Dude, you got to come in here and tell everybody about the rolling straps. Look, I'm prepared tonight. I got one sitting right here. I don't even got to get out of my chair. That's what he's talking about. We manufacture these at the jump off. They're amazing. They're they're the best. They're super awesome. Um, they help you roll slides if you didn't know. Go to my YouTube channel. You'll see them on there. There's three different videos. But anyways, what uh, what we do on this is I like to in the beginning, right? And nobody ever likes to talk or ask questions in the beginning. But you're all supposed to be having a drink with me. So as you have a couple of drinks and loosen up a little bit, get you uh, get you a little bit loosey goosey so you can ask questions later. <laughs> I will go fly solo and I will talk about um, a couple topics I have on my mind that I think are relevant to you guys. And uh, I can take questions at any time. Like, right, we got no serious flow to this whole thing. It's just, we're all here for fun and we're all here to learn. So one of the first topics I wanted to kind of bring up and talk about that I get questions on every now and then, but honest to God, I, I wish I got these question, this question more often. Uh, because it is a big one, but the question is, what should I name my company? Okay. So I had somebody that was in my DMS on Instagram asking me about what they should name their company, uh, either today or yesterday. 
um, and we were talking and he sent me over like, you know, I guess you could say the logo that they kind of drafted up. Um, no offense to anybody here, but it, you know, it looked, everything looked rough draft, right? Because it wasn't done. It wasn't started. It wasn't, wasn't going yet. And so, and the name of the business was Shans or Shans, C-H-A-N's like I don't, Chan the Man Slides or something like that. Right. And, and it, it is catchy. It is catchy, right? Chan the Man Inflatables or, or, or whatever that was. It was definitely catchy. But my reply back was, you know, something that definitely um, surprised them. And I don't know their real name or anything because of Instagram. So I can just see their Instagram name. But my reply back definitely surprised them because what I had said was when you're naming your company, you, you want to have a couple different things. And, okay. And now this first take is sheerly my take on this. This is not SEO stuff. This is not anything fancy. All right. But you want to name your company, in my opinion, okay, something that you can build to where employees are going to be passionate about it if you do a fantastic job. Meaning, when I started the jump off, had I named it Nick's Inflatables or, or Nick's Rentals or Nick's Party Rentals or whatever, just to me, the notion that I'm going to have the guys that work for me be super freaking proud to go walk around in a shirt that says Nick's Rentals, I don't know. It just seems far-fetched to me. Um, or, or even my last name, right? Glassit Rentals, or I, I messed around, right? My last name's Glassit, so I messed around with Glass House, Bounce House, Glass House. I, don't, I couldn't find anything that, that stuck, but I don't know. It just, to me, in the long run, the, the analogy that I use today in the DM, um, I'm going to use again on this live because I think it was very, very fit, right? What I said was, you, Amazon is not called Bezos' bookstore. Apple's not called Steve-O's computers, right? Imagine if Steve Jobs had named Apple Steve's computers or Steve-O's PCs or something. That sounds like a bad, like a poorly named, or, or sorry, a poorly ran local business doing like terrible radio ads. Come on down to Steve-O's computers, right? No, it's one word, Apple, and it is the Apple logo. Now, obviously we're not computer companies and obviously we're not, uh, we're, we're not, right? The Amazons of the world. There's always your exceptions. McDonald's sounds like a, you know, Irish bar, yet it's their last name, right? I'm not saying that there's not exceptions to the rule, but just for me, when I'm naming a company, I want to do a couple of things. Number one, I want to name it something that I can build brand around, build brand around. Nix is not something I can build brand around, okay? Number two, I want to have a logo that I can be proud of, and I do the logo thing way different. It, go to my website, you, you'll notice my logo has no, here's a, like a teeny tiny one, right? That's going to be super glary, but um, there's no better shop right there, right? There's no kids bouncing, jumping off of this. There's no castles in the background. There's no palm trees. There's no bounce houses. There's no water sets. It's right. The, the notion is it's clean and neat. That's just my aesthetic. I'm not doing it right. You're not doing it wrong, but you go name it something you can build brand around and then have a logo that's memorable. That to me goes a long way to build locally in your community. All right. The last piece of, of the advice of what to name your company from, you know, surely my opinion standpoint is have fun with it. Um, a good exercise I did with somebody a long ass time ago through DMs that was DMing me about this. I said, if it was a, it was a guy DMing me, right? I said, all right, Imagine today that your wife tells you that not only is she pregnant, but it's going to be a boy and she doesn't give a rip what you name it. You can name it anything you want. You can name it Spartan if you want, right? What would you name your boy, right? Maximus or something, right? You're going to have some powerful name. Cool. That then gives you a good template to go name your company something that's going to be memorable, right? Something that's going to mean something to you. For me, uh, I named it the jump off, right? I thought it was super fun. I, I knew nothing of the industry at the time. So had I known everything I know now, I probably would have named it something differently. But right, the word jump being in it is is fitting 
almost every freaking one of us has jump or bounce or something right in our name. Um, and then I was driving down the highway. I still worked a, a regular job. I was driving down the highway. One of my favorite songs of all time came on, which is Wu Tang Gravel Pit, right? And right in the beginning says it's the jump off, right? There's a whole thing where he says the jump off. And so uh, like it hit me and I was like, that's it. That's the name of the bounce house company. I only had two at the time, right? But I'm like, that's it. That's the name of the bounce house company, the jump off, right? So for me, whenever I talk about the jump off, I say the name or what's the name of your company? Like, the, like right, Gravel Pit. Like that song came out in what, 1996 or something? Like it's been on my mind that long for, for that long. I've loved that song for that freaking long right? The jump off also means something, right? It means like big party or, or super fun event, whatever, uh, in kind of slang. So, so I had a lot of fun with it. So the jump off is still something that like, when I say it, like it means something to me. All right. That's what to name your company all from my opinion. Now, let me give you good advice, good business advice. Okay. You're want to name your company. I'm going to see if I can think of some good ones that pop off the top of my head, but you're going to want to name your company something where when they Google it, you come up, not the millions of other things that could be named that. So if you, wherever you are sitting right now, goes and Googles the jump off, you know, it comes up a Lil' Kim song that I've never even heard. Other people have heard it, but I've never even heard the song. I've never seen the music video, right? I know what it looks like when it pops up on Google, but I will be nowhere on any page of Google ever, right? I'm so buried, it's not even ridiculous. Now, if you happen to be in my hometown and you Google the jump off, Lil' Kim comes up and then I'm below her, right? So around here, I guess where it matters, it's, it's, uh, it, it's a little better SEO, but that took time to get there, right? So I made a mistake naming my company after accidentally a super popular at some point in time song. I don't listen to rap, even though it's named after a Wu-Tang. I really don't listen to rap that much. So I've never heard the song. I didn't know it was a song, but you can't find me by Googling the jump off right? You have to Google the jump off Nick Glassett, or you have to Google the jump off water slides. Like it's not a really, it's not a great name. All right. Better names that, let me think, let me think if I can think of a few. Okay. Oh, and my, and my Christmas light business is the same thing. So my I Christmas light business is called let's get lit. That's fun. It's cool. It's awesome. It's, it's um, right. It very much encompasses my personality, Like go Google, let's get lit. You know, what pops up a bunch of like, memes of getting drunk i then changed i changed my uh my name my first year it used to be just in case tents and events and i changed it to just in case party rentals because party rentals is a way more search term than tents and events correct right and so it's like so a a, a good name that's around me i'm gonna give a little shout out to joe hopefully he doesn't mind but the biggest rental company around me is in new orleans and it's called about to bounce um and and that name is just right it kind of flows off the tongue like it's a good name about to bounce it flows off the tongue and then if you google that that's the only thing that comes up because that's the only thing that's named that anywhere ever it's very unique which is which is really what you want to go for right so if you wanted to name yours king midas party rentals go google that go google king midas see what the hell comes up guarantee you you can't own that that name on google organically off jump you know what i mean um from there right i'm not an seo guru and i'm not a marketing guru so having it be a unique name that's seo friendly is really the only like pro advice i've got for you but i'll leave it at this have fun with it have fun with it it's something you have to have forever right and something that will start to become your identity especially once the company scales and you get big people will stop you at the grocery store you know what i mean and be like that's my water slide guy that's my christmas light guy oh that's the jump off guy whatever you know what i mean have it be something you want to be proud of uh if you if you're going to name it after your last name and then put inflatables by it it's to me that's not that fun that's all that's all all right, you guys got any questions on that? Here we go. Victoria Willis, she said, blissful bounces. See, that's got the BB, right, which is catchy. The BB reminds you of Fortnite. Every place on Fortnite's called, right, the, it starts with the same letter. 
Um, and then blissful back there, there's nobody that, that you're the only one with that name, which is wonderful. And then it's got a good, uh, it's got it. It fits what you do very well. Blissful, right? You've got the word bouncing in there and then blissful. It's a unique word that means happy. Like that's a good one. That's definitely a good one. Um, my new business is called Christmas lights of Y W N Y West New York. I'm assuming. Yeah, that's the, okay. That's it. That, that's Bobby Wilkerson. That's a good point, Bobby. You could just go super literal with it. Like screw it. You know what I mean? Um, there's a very big company that's, um, not anywhere near me. They're, they're in the next state over, but they're literally called Biloxi bounce house from Biloxi, Mississippi, Biloxi bounce house, BB the bounce house in it. The city name is in it. It just, there's right. I'm in Madisonville, Madisonville bounce houses. Doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. Biloxi bounce house. That's a killer name, dude. But yeah, just go super literal with it. You know what I mean? But, but just be thoughtful about it. You know what I mean? Naming a Christmas light company is way different in my eyes too than a bounce house business. Why? I don't know. But you name a bounce house business, what do you always want to name it? Jump something, bounce something, right? Like always. Christmas lights, it's a little more, uh, uh, or I guess it's a little less cliche, I guess. Shining stars bounce house. See, that's a good one, right? So so that's Michael uh, in the Zoom. So shining stars bounce house. So if you were coming to me with that name prior to starting the company, I would tell you to go Google shining stars just to see what the hell pops up. I don't know. That's, that's, you know, pretty, pretty out there to where there's probably not a bunch of stuff popping up for shining stars, but I would tell you to go Google it before you name your company that, but, but that is definitely a good one. Gator. Yep. Gator bounce house. See, and that's one where it's like when they Google you. So Megan Garcia, she's called Gator bounce Reynolds, Gator bounce Reynolds. So that, that company name is made to where they can't not Google it exactly. They're not going to go Google Gator, the word Gator, because that's just way too uh, vague. They're going to go Google Gator Bounce Rentals every single time. That's a freaking, that's a really good one. West New York. Yeah, he said, all right, Bobby said it stands for West New York. Christmas lights of West New York. Yeah, whatever. That's says what you do, says where you are, right? I'm sure everybody knows W N Y around you. They know exactly what that is. Oh, John said the name Apple was chosen to appear in the phone book before. Oh, so Apple was named to be the letter A. So in the phone book, it's, yep. uh, it's first, right? Well, well, my, first my grandfather's business was ABC party rental or ABC uh, concrete. Yeah, that's why there's so many triple A's too, is because it puts it first in the phone book. Numbers actually go first too. So it's like one, two, three bounce. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you and if you named your company one, two, three bounce, like that's nobody's gonna go Google one, two, three. They're gonna go Google one, two, three bounce, and you own that. I'm sure that's I'm sure there's plenty of those around, right? But Google, I think, would be smart enough to know that it's right local. What are you doing? I I lucked out. I named I named my company after myself, but it but it's like catchy still. It, it's yeah. still sellable. Yeah, yours Just has the, yeah, yours has there's like a meaning, like a literal meaning, and then it's like a double entendre. Do you want to say hi to yeah, it's, like when I own the company, people know that I'm the owner, but I could still sell it. It's still like, oh yeah, you own Justin Case Party Rentals. Right, exactly. Exactly. If you would have named it your last name, which I'm not gonna I'm not going to pronounce. <laughs> you know how to say my last name? Baracaccio? Ferraccio. Yeah, if you would have named it that, then it would have been, you know what I mean? Oh, it would have been bad. Do you guys yeah, like the new been. logo for PRK? Yeah, there you go. So Justin re rebranded. Justin rebranded Party Rental Knowledge. He sent me that logo, and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like yeah. the new color. Watch, so watch for cars. You need to do that. I don't know, dude. I don't know how to change it. So when my picture's off, it shows up like Janine's. Uh, I have like I have a goofy ass picture that I think shows up if I have my camera off. Where it's like I tried to be a realtor for about fifteen minutes, and that business was <laughs> not for me. And so like, right? They take you this like fancy ass headshot, and then the lady made me look all tan and everything. It's a good picture, but it's just not my personality. <laughs> you just gotta save the picture, Justin. It's it's a place to save it. Excuse me, how you doing? I, yeah, it's a favorite. I'm trying to find it. 
Oh, I've been playing around with this thing for a minute. I'm I'm gonna gonna I got a YouTube it. I'll figure it out later when we're not in the middle of the video. <laughs> All right. Look, some help with my light with my light company. That's what I need help with. I'm trying to figure out a name for this light company. Yeah, where are you I'm at? Again? I'm in Memphis. So my company and my party and rental rental uh well, I got a bounce city. house. I'll tell you for like, bluff city but uh, bluff city lights are already taken and something else. So I got a bounce I house. I'll say for six hundred bucks, Bobby. You said what? I told Bobby I got a bounce house. I'll sell them for six hundred bucks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I'm in Memphis, Nick. So, uh, oh, have you already sent the link out to make the last payment for um? For the class. No, I've got it on my to-do list to do today. And then uh, I had a, one of my kids sick yesterday. And my other one was sick today. And my wife's out of town. Oh. So it did, not, it did not get done today. But it is top of the list to do tomorrow. Okay. All right. I've been looking for it. Yeah, yeah. I'll We're going to talk about you. naming the company when we get down there, right? Yeah, yeah, we can. I mean, and, you know, and, and, and Fred's been in this business uh, 13 years, so... When it comes to Christmas light stuff, like I know what I'm doing and everything, but he's gonna know. He's gonna know what's a better move on all that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure and bring it up, or or just make sure and ask. You know what I mean at the class, because I'm sure it's gonna be on, on on a lot of people's minds of what to name their company. Okay, and what time is the class? Is from what time to what time? We're thinking eight to five. Like we want to do an all day shot, um, but okay, but we uh, but we don't need to do like we know we know that. You guys all know how to run a business, you know what I mean? So we don't have to do like a whole bunch of business stuff. What, well, baby? Uh huh. Say it. Yes. Um, like I said, my wife's out of town, so I'm like being a dad and a. You're all good. It, yeah, ever since COVID, it's become like almost acceptable and normal. Right. It's like, right. It's but uh. But yeah, so we're thinking eight to five, um, and and we're gonna do a good portion of classroom stuff, and then we're thinking we're gonna literally right because the warehouse is like twelve minutes away from my house, so we think we're gonna actually literally leave and come to my house and put Christmas lights on my house. Um, that way, you guys get to work with it in person, awesome. installing okay. on a house, and, and that's if I can't line up. Right, it's really early, right, uh, to have a client. <laughs> get installed so if i can work out to get a client we may do that but my house is so close it's just like whatever we can just come over here and hang out and then i got a I question the lights yeah. are you gonna send us an email with where we're gonna go because i'm in florida so i've got to travel to where you're at yep yep so, so so i should have everything out tomorrow um i was i was just been right i've been working on a million things but um i wanted to get in set into stone how we're gonna do so and I got to advertise this too, but basically if you pay to come to the Christmas light training course, you get not only right trained the day with, with Fred and I, but then you have access to both of us through the rest of the season for any emergencies that come up, any questions that come up. Right. So uh, what, it, what I think is going to end up happening is I'm going to make a WhatsApp group and you'll have access to all of us in there. Right. And then I'm a phone call away. If you get into some sort of craziness, um, and so that should all be lined out. So then I'll send that out with all of the locations and everything. Um, and, and both my kids should go to school tomorrow. So it should come tomorrow. Yeah. Also, is it the 29th or the 30th? Cause you sent me the 29th, but online it says the 30th. So I'm not sure. So which I've, date got, it actually is. I've got, uh, the bounce house one is the day before. So let's see, let me look. All right, so the so that bounce house the one is the 29th. The Christmas light yeah. one is the 30th. All uh, right, just making sure. Yep, so Friday the 30th. Uh, we wanted to do a Friday to where, because uh, that, you know, most of everybody's going to be coming to this thing is going to be bounce house operators. So we wanted to try and make it towards the end of the week for if anybody that's got a job, it's easier to obviously get a Friday off than a random Thursday, but then get you guys back on the road if, if you need to be back home for Saturday for, for party rental stuff. So. All right, sounds good. Cool. And that, for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, uh, so we've got, um, so a guy named Fred Zimmerman, um, he is, you know, whatever, an expert, if you will, um, low key, kind of like the me, if you will, of Christmas light world. 
Um, he approached me. He said, Hey, let's do a, let's do a training um, at your warehouse. I said, hell yeah, dude. I, you know me, I love to teach. I love to talk in front of people. So it sounds great. So we've set up to where we're going to have a Christmas light installation business training at my warehouse on the 30th. Um, we've decided to keep the course. Uh, uh, it was going to be a thousand bucks. Uh, we decided to keep it at 800 at a, like an introductory price of 800. I decided to keep it 800. Um, just because I want to, right. I want to pack the, pack the place and, and, and have as much people there as we can. So we can teach as many people as we can. I, I really do honest to God think that like, obviously Christmas light installation is not for everybody, but if you're ambitious and, and like business and are looking for something to do in the off season, I can't tell you, I mean, my goal this year, my revenue goal this year for putting up Christmas lights is $300,000. Next year, it jumps to 600. And then by 2024, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this, but I'm still putting it as my goal. By 2024, I'm shooting for a million dollars in revenue. Million dollars in revenue by 2024. Now, I my real goal is to do that by 2025, but it, let's just make it 2024, right? And that's just because the industry, the, the, the way the industry works, you scale year over year because you go sell all these people first year, you go put up all these lights, right? It's a shitload of work. Then you take them down and store them for them all year. Then next year you go put the lights back up on that house and they're already built. And it's your call, whether you want to drop the price. I do, right? I drop the price. I take the material cost out of it. Many don't, you don't need to. It's just something, I don't know, whatever. my conscience likes that. Um, but then you then have, right? Uh, a, a solid base of revenue that's already coming in. You lights are already built. Then from there, you go then go sell more clients, right? And so it scales year over year to where you can get to a point where you don't even really sell. Like you can just make your price so astronomical in four, five, six, seven years that uh, to make it worth your while to go do that, the job because you're already booked out of all the clients you already have. You know what I mean? And all of that kind of depends on where you're at. So I'm in New Orleans. We do Mardi Gras stuff too. That's why my let's get lit shirts Mardi Gras colored. But um, but but for the most part, you know, we're gonna go do some Halloween installs where we put up uh, some all purples. We put up some uh, mixture of purples and oranges, like whatever. Um, and then we go back and switch those to their Christmas colors in November. But then realistically, I mean, you work all of November in the first week and a half of December. You know what I mean? And you can do. You know, you just heard my revenue numbers, right? So um, I'm, I'm very excited for the training. You know what I mean? And there's some people coming to so, the training that I have confidence in 100% are going to do a lot of business, right? So then next year, this, I think in the bounce house world, we'll see how well of a job I do. But I think I could really blow up the Christmas light industry with bounce house people because uh, some of the people that are, I know are coming to this training are going to crush it, right? And we'll have their confessional or no, what is that called? Uh, uh, where they say that how good of a job they did. I, I can't remember the word off the top of my head. Uh, to where next year is going to be crazy. So I, I'm hoping to do multiple next year, by the way. So I'm curious, do you uh, do you charge people, if you're not charging the second year for material, are you charging for breakage or any replacement parts? No, we warranty for everything for three years. Um, and then in a nutshell, yeah, I removed the I, re, I removed the materials cost from from the install. All right, yeah, I was just curious if like you, like ball breakage and shit because I go through bulbs like crazy just setting up tent lights sometimes like they just freaking fall out the things and fall on the ground and whatnot. Yeah, I mean it happens and they're tough. I mean the stuff that I use is tough. Like this year, I'm making a switch this year to running almost everything Minleon, I think. Like I got, I know I got Minleon socket wire. I know I got Minleon bulb. This that was the other question. Like, can you do multi-color, like where you can just change it? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We do. Uh, oh, like push a button and change it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Fred just released those on his site, and they're they're pretty freaking cool. Um, they're, my thing is, you can just keep them on year round, and just you know what I mean. Just change yeah. The colors whenever you want. On on the video that he did, and I do not remember where he put this video, but on the video he did, he had it red, white, and blue. And then he hits a button on the remote or on his phone, but I think a remote. And then the blue turns green. So it goes red, white, and blue. And he hits the button and your brain kind of goes, whoa. Like it goes from right patriotic to all of a sudden Christmas. It was, it's super cool. Um, 
I, I'm very interested in those. Uh, they, they don't go purple and gold, right? So what? So, yes. As of now, they don't, I guess. Um, we were just texting about it, Fred and I, whenever he sent me the, the link to the YouTube channel or, or the YouTube video. But uh, it was it was super cool, dude. And I was like, oh, my God, if I can sell those instead of having to go back out and do a freaking bulb swap, like I'll just charge them. I'll eat the cost up front. And then when we do a bulb swap, I'll charge them for the bulb swap. We'll go hit the button. Oh, my God. It would be so great, dude. So great. Oh, here, Bobby's, Bobby's in the comments in, in Zoom. He said, yeah, they have RGB C9s, but you can only do one color for each of them. Oh, and they only got a 90-day max install. So so there's some limitations to it, but, but Wait, essentially. What? 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 Yeah, so um, a lot of the stuff is warrant like right. So your three year warranty really is a three month warranty with the idea that you only put them up for one month and then you take them down and you go put them back up. That's the whole thing, in my opinion, right? And 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 anybody that has watched my channel or been on any of these booze and biz shows with me knows like I'm not Mister Go Do My Research. Like I I went and started hanging Christmas lights not knowing it was even an industry then found out as an industry and now I do it the way I do it. Right. But, but uh, it's kind of a gray area. This the, war the whole warranty thing. It's kind of a gray area to me. So, so basically what I tell everybody is because, because we got uh, where I live, I I'm on the other side of the lake from the world. So we don't have a ton of Mardi Gras uh, customers on this side of the lake, like maybe four over in New Orleans, almost all of them switch their lights to Mardi Gras lights. And so basically what I tell them is, if you're going to go up in for, you know, basically you're going in some point in time in November, and then we're going to keep them up until some point in time in February, potentially late February for Mardi Gras. You know what I mean? That period of time is the period of time I will warranty them for three years. That's basically what I say. Um, I've got a couple that then switch to Easter. Uh, one of them is such an old client. Like I didn't even have service agreements. It was all handshakes and everything. Um, they're amazing people. They're amazing people. I absolutely love working with them. So I just take care of them. I, I actually switched out their entire line last year. I was just having problems with it. They got a whole new line. I didn't even charge them because they're just, they're amazing clients. So I just do, do what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bobby said in the comments, it's all made up in my opinion. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with that. It's all made up. Like it's just such a great area. You can do whatever you want. Um, you know what I mean? And you carry, basically what I do too, is I carry my general liability insurance for the length of time I have lights on houses, right? So for most everybody in the entire US, you're gonna carry liability insurance November, December, um, and, and then half of January, and then you just cancel it. Me, I carry mine all the way up until March because I've got the Mardi Gras stuff going on. And then I actually kick it in, generally speaking, October 1st. And, and I don't know, I, it just might be unique to where I live that people like to celebrate the holidays because of the Mardi Gras thing but we do have a decent number of Halloween installs. I mean, we'll, we'll probably do off the top of my head, we'll probably do 20 grand of, of sales in October, just Halloween lights, right? Greens and purples and all that. We'll probably do 20 grand. So I'll start my general liability in October and run it till March, but it's like 75 bucks a month. Like, right. So is it, is it the insurance off, off revenue though? Mm -mm. Uh, not no. mine. No, not mine. Not mine. I mean, am I, oh, I, like, and I carry a lowish, like compared to the bounce house. You know um, what I'm trying to say though? Cause they don't want to make sense to cancel. If it's off revenue, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, Bobby said his insurance is $410 a year. Like it's so low because there's, you don't have the liability of a, a, a child getting hurt or, I mean, potentially a child could get killed on a water fight, right? Mega ultra super duper rare, but could happen that, that does just doesn't exist in the right what's going to happen you know what i mean you're going to pop their breaker you know what I mean you're going to you're going to fry the you know it's just the the liability is way less so that way the the insurance is well people fall off ladders though yeah but that's going to fall that that doesn't come down to your general liability side right that it goes on a work of comps that's your work right. comp it goes up okay yeah that's true it makes sense actually you're right yeah yeah so it's it's much so what's your workers comp like nick <laughs> well, uh, I, and, and I have talked to now two C I actually made a phone call to another CPA 
um, that does not do any of my books, but I, I trust uh, clients that she has. And she said 1099. She's like, no, we're 1099 and all day long. So my CPA said 1099. And then a separate CPA said the same thing. So yep, just that's, that. okay. that's how I do a lot of people 1099. That's mm -hmm. how I would sell some shit like that. And it's, it's right. A lot of people 1099 in the bounce house world because they're small business. Um, they're, you, you should you can't really do 1099 in a bounce house world is different. Right. When you're, exactly. You're using, right. And you might be a little different too, because you're using your equipment and whatnot too. So 1099 is a little bit different, but it's, you, you're got less materials and it's less intricate stuff. It's just lights. So it's, it's considered material. It can almost be almost considered like a window. You know what I mean? Whereas in a bounce house is like, you need to go set up this bounce house at this time. It needs to be staked at this yes. time in my truck with all my tools. So then you're, you know what I mean? Now you're, and then they try and 1099 them. And it's like, no, it's basically, that's a paid employee. You're just trying to, that's tax evasion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so and like, for instance, uh, in the, in the Christmas light game, like, so I'm going to have, um, so Trevor, who works for me, um, great employee, uh, he works for the jump off. He's going to also run lights, right? Most of my Christmas light guys are my bounce house guys, right? Um, and he has his own truck. So it's like, I told him, I said, bro, you know, we'll just get you that, you know, I'm going to buy him as ladder rack, but I'm going to go spend $220. We'll put a ladder rack on his truck. Uh, he's already like, he said, my dad has all these extra ladders that he bought. He didn't know he had ladders. So he's got like brand new ladders coming out though. He said, I'll just go take those. I said, yeah, there you go. Bro. The, I mean, you're so 1099 at that point, right? Now he's yeah. going to have to have, uh, uh, I like all my guys to have a 32 foot extension ladder. I cannot imagine his dad bought one of those. Right. So I might have to go buy a ladder, but like everything else is going to be his basically, you know what I mean? Obviously not the materials, but. It's a conversation with it. And it's like, everything's yours. If you're. Mm -hmm. if you're <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah, you're 1099 with the bounce house business. Yeah. Like you said, driving your truck with your trailer coming from your warehouse with your bounce house and your blower and your court. It's, it's a little sketchy. Doing it the way you want them, you to do it. You know what I mean? At your times and your right, booking making all the clients. Schedule. Yes, right, right. Yeah, whereas Christmas lights much looser. All right, I'm on beer number two. I'm switching to Bush Latte. Um, so fun story about Bush Light. So I drank more of this beer when I was a teenager than you could ever, 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 ever fathom. Uh, I have not had it since probably I was a teenager, maybe a 20-year-old. Uh, the other day, my buddy Dan came over here and he had a freaking you know, cooler and opens it and he pulls a bush light out. I'm like, bro, you drink a bush light? And so I'm like, you know, old time's sake, bro, give me a bush light. And now I'm like, it's actually not bad. Is it great? No, no. Somebody the other day, one of my neighbors the other day said, yeah, I'll, he said, uh, yeah, I, I hear it's a great beer. I, I'll make you a promise. As soon as I see it on tap somewhere, I will buy one. He said, I ain't never seen one on tap. So <laughs> true, true I, to that. I feel like beer, certain beer is like I get like immune and don't like the taste after a while. Then I'll switch off. Like Labatt Blue is brewed in Buffalo. And it's like I that was my beer as a kid and like growing up and whatnot. And like past two years, don't even really like the taste of it. Yeah, that's why like. I've been drinking this for so I used to get made fun of because I started drinking this a long ass time ago. Uh, that's a long story I don't want to tell. But and then right as all my friends got older and older and older, now they all started drinking that. It's funny. Um, all right, let's get some questions going. So yes, Christian, I don't know if you're still on on you're on YouTube. Yes, questions in the comments. Let's go. Joey is got uh is sacred. I'm, I'm jacking up your last name, Joey. But Bush Light. He's a Bush Light. Yeah, I'm telling you, Bush Light's not bad. And this 30 pack, I wish I would have known what this 30 pack cost. And technically speaking, I should have had the jump off pay for this, right? Because this is a business expense. For me, it is now. Beer is now a business expense for me. All right, let's check out what we got happening. All right, so we got a little girl coming down the hall. I can hear. I love Land Shark. Yeah, dude, the Land Shark is the Land Shark is underrated. I don't know why this beer is so good and not like a big deal, but it's freaking good. Yeah, if you guys got co uh, uh, questions, I mean, you can either unmute or, Yo, or we, drop we in should a like do a, We should do like a pre-pipe off of Tariq's video 
about IAPA because he's about to be going talking about IAPA. We can get some little he hype does. action going. I totally goofed that up last week. I told everybody after mine, like leave mine, we'll get done by eight, and you go to Tariq's, and then it was not that. It was today. Um, yeah, he's. Uh, what time does he even go on? But um, eight dude, central, okay. I believe. Check and see, but I've jacked it up every you time. You want me to check? You want me to check for you? Yeah, okay. and and by the way, if anybody's interested in the Christmas light training, so this year the way it's going to go down, no, there's no Zoom. Right, you got to be there in person. It's in my warehouse, which is in, in Madisonville, Louisiana. Um, yeah, you got to travel in, but we're right by New Orleans, dude. Just make a weekend of it. Uh, tickets are eight hundred bucks. You can buy them at. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can put them in the chats here, but you can buy them at. Um, you're buying those on the jumpoffstore.com at the jumpoffstore.com. Hour and a half. Hour and fifteen minutes it starts. Hour fifteen. Nine yeah, so it is Eastern, eight, eight Central. Yep. Let's see if I go. Oh. Dude, I'm so hyped for IAPA this year. Dude, I'm pretty lit for it too because it's you know my first time ever going. And well, if you want good hotels, you guys better like get them now, like yesterday. Like this the case is almost already all booked up too. Yeah, I need to do the one. Yeah, I'm doing the one that you told me, but I need to do it. It's on my fucking list today, but I had all my <clears throat> oh shit. I had my so this the case. Okay, what is IAPA? International Association of Attraction Parks and Amusements. That's the basically the biggest convention for the entertainment industry. Oh, that is a ten. Trying to get you guys the link to the to the Christmas light training in the Zoom, and it did not cooperate with me at all. <laughs> and then, do they offer discounts at IAPA? Yes, it's one of the biggest places for Nick, discounts. It's on there. It's good for I like, just clicked here. on it. In Zoom, it worked? Yeah, it's on there. Okay, it's super ugly, but it's in there. Yep. And then I don't know how, uh, and then for you peeps all over on YouTube, I don't know how to get it to you guys on the comments over from StreamYard on an iPad. I got no shot, so I'm not going to try. If you're on stream, so, yeah, it's, I can, uh, so I've, got like the StreamYard. I've got StreamYard on the iPad, so I don't even know how to work it. If you send me the link, I can go in the back end and be on there, too. You got stream yard to Zoom? I didn't know you did that. Ooh, look at you. Yeah, I so love it. You can, I wish, like, my phone, like, my phone's on TikTok right now. So I got TikTok live here in front of me on my phone. I've got Zoom here going to Facebook. And I've got iPad right there going to YouTube and LinkedIn. It can do LinkedIn. So this thing? Remember That's I told me. You, you need to check out restream.io. That way you can told, do it all from your Mac. Restream.io. Nick, I, Nick, I told you I broke my mic and I went and bought that new one with the, the overhang one. Yeah, bro, that one's dope. Is that the same <laughs> one you bought? It's the same. So it's literally the same thing. This is the old one. This is the Blue Yeti. And then, like, the basically the – here, hold on. I'm trying to find my camera. There it is. This piece right here, like, like got really loose. So I'm just going to buy another one of these, stick it in the box, and return it. Hopefully Best Buy doesn't hear me. But, yeah, it's – this thing's I like this thing honestly. Yeah, tomorrow, September 3rd. Right now. Yeah, that's legit. I'm, I need to get one of those because I can over my head right now. Yeah. Yes. Once mom gets home. Eight days. Eight days. All right. So yeah, uh Bobby was asking who had to zoom after this. Um, it's Tariq and he's doing a IAPA 101, I believe it's called. <laughs> Hang on one sec. I'm going to mute. I'll just join. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're cool. I'll, uh, I'll let you go run this stuff real quick. I kind of like the mic in the corner like that. Makes me feel professional. Yeah, I can hear you good, too. Yeah, and this, and this one came with that, like, web around the back. It was all, dude, this whole thing was 200 bucks. It's cheap for the cheap. But, yeah, see, Leap and Wild. How did you get your picture to come up like that? I want to I wanna do that. But, um, so yeah, IAPA, everybody, it is the place to be. Yeah, it's in Orlando. What we got? Where's it at? It's in Orlando. So you need to be there in person to get the discounts. You do not need to be there in person to get the discounts. But the real cool thing about IAPA is like you get to see everything in person, see how people design their water slides, see the stitching up close and personal, see like, 
things that you've never seen before. It's also where all the like people de 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 debut their newest stuff. Um, all the manufacturers like throw parties and events and whatnot. And it's like, it, the look at it too. We are an industry full of party people and we all get the party often because we work every weekend and we all go hang out for like one weekend and one week during the year in IAPA and we just get rowdy and it's awesome. It's just like, it's a very good time. We all know how to party. It's a nonstop party and entertainment. I literally had like a sensory overload and like a, almost a mental breakdown like last year. <laughs> it's so many ideas and so many like, it's like, and I, I did, I doubled my business again this year and, and it was not any small numbers. I went from 165 to like, I'm, on, I'm push I'm over 300. I'm trying to push 320 this year and it's getting, it's just getting crazy 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 that's legit yeah i'm excited like uh i mean i interact you know i interact with people all day freaking long virtually through dm and all this and i don't know how many of the people that dm me will be there right but uh it's gonna be super cool to be there and like meet people in person it's gonna be like i'm gonna lose my voice i'm gonna put it that way i know myself i'm gonna lose my voice oh yeah i it's, it's just, what about bounce water you it's bounce water i, I don't know about them super heavy the yeah. owner's kind of wild and uh, 18 ounce 18 ounce vinyl huh At, like the whole unit no it's not even it's not even that it's the fact that he puts so much vinyl and he does overkill it but it comes to a point where if like it doesn't matter how thick the vinyl is everybody once the seams let loose and if it's heavier they will let loose faster then yeah. water gets inside it and then the more water that gets inside it the more it's harder to move that's anything you use ever that's why I yell at my guys to really actually pay attention what blowers are putting on what units because you don't want to stretch those seams out faster than they need to be. Yeah, those things are heavy. I have four of them, and I wish I would never would have bought them. Dang. They are um, super heavy. I, what, my dual lane is 620 pounds exposed. dry. Exposed. I was really about to get some from you. <laughs> it bit my dolly in half, man. No and shit. it was a thousand pound capacity dolly, and I had to upgrade it big time. That's crazy. Here, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get over to their stuff so we can see. Like, I remember looking at their stuff like a long time ago, kind of back when I was like naive. You know what I mean? And uh, I liked their stuff, but I never bought. Oh no, it's bounced. But I never bought any of their stuff. Just I, I don't. I don't know why. Oh no, that's not it. Jump I orange. I love. I love jump orange. Honestly. I have, I just got them and I love them too. Jump, yeah, my we, jump board, dude, my jump orange slides rent more than any of my other manufacturers. And I'm sorry for anybody else seeing anything, but it's like the way they, the eye catching, it could, listen, I have to do some data there because we're, we're talking about small scale stuff, but I have heard this stuff from a lot of uh, different people. And like in the eye catchingness of it is, uh, was very nice. So I don't know if it's just because of the positions in my site that they rent as much as they are, but like I've had, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we. I, yeah, I like leisure too. I love leisure. Yeah, see, leisure's by me. Leisure's in uh, St. Pete by my house, so I'm not far from them. But I don't have any units for them. I just have jump orange and. Oh, uh, dude, um, you know, shipping and walk over to Tim and Elena are great people. Tim is a yeah. good dude. Tim is a good dude. Somebody said my name though. I did. It was me. I figured out how to do. Um, Ooh. if you go back, if you look at the top where it say you got leave in the right corner, zoom in the middle, and then the little microphone, and then the arrow to go back. Yep. You hit the arrow. You hit the arrow to go back, and then that takes you to like the regular zoom, and then you go down to the bottom under more. Oh, you gotta leave. You go, no, you're not leaving. You just you going back once you hit back, you'll be able to get back in it, you know, get back to the zone thing. But uh, once you hit the back arrow, then you click on your name and then it'll have a place where you can put your profile picture oh, under, okay. your, under your profile. All right, so leave and come back. Yeah, and then once you do that, you just hit back on the screen with the uh, where you see everybody at, and then you'll be back yeah. in the zone. You're the best, I appreciate you. You're welcome. Y'all be helping me out so much, so I got to do a little something. Just I was sitting here like, why can't I figure it out? Like, why all these people How would you even roll this unit right here? Yeah, I don't How would you? Know. I would fold those pools inside, and then I would fold out. 
I, this thing is kind of weird. I, I'm almost like going taco style. But what, so whenever I'm going to look for new units, if I've never bought from them before and I go to their website and I see a bunch of information and no weight, I'm always suspect, always. Like, yeah, so, and do I, I trust like the weight? No, no. This is, this has been my go-to dude. So, the, so HEC has a, a warehouse in New Orleans. I drive my ass over there and buy this sucker cash. Boom. But if you go and I, I do like them. I've heard a lot about them, and I'm just curious. What is it? What is it? HEC. HEC. They're, they're decent. The way they're I the decent. way I look at it is like the way I describe it is they're like the Nike. That's the way I. That's just my, in my heart of hearts. Like Nike invents shit that then everybody else has to chase them. That's HEC. I, I do mean, you have any of the no like foot slide, like the little smaller slide, like the twelve or thirteen? I wouldn't say slide. that. They came out with the cool seamless hey, stuff, hey. but and yeah, and all this seamless. But... And and I know there's people that are skeptical about this seamless. I've got uh, uh -huh. eight year old rampage that is seamless, and bro, it it looks like the slide liner, the seamless slide liner is in perfect condition. Perfect. Can Do I you have that? any of those smaller uh, slides, Nick? Like they 12 foot or 13 foot slides? I used to. Like I used to. I sold it and I'm so, I, I'm kicking myself for selling it. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It's called, it used to be called Splash. This one. I had this right here. I think mine was a 12, but, but I had this. Oh, okay. Rented well with, you know, with daycares and stuff like that. Okay. Watch How it. heavy was because I got the tin and table ones, the little rental light ones, and they were really good for me, but they not um they are like really really thin, and so I was considering um going to a thicker vinyl um to you know to one of the um other companies for you know the more thicker vinyl, not just the rental light stuff. Yeah. So and I I do like HEC with the um without the slide line because it just makes everything easier. Um, so, so I'm just wondering, are they, what was it as heavy as, um, how heavy was it? No, I mean, this, this, this was a one man job. Like when we had that, it was a one man job, pick up and, and drop off every time. No matter okay. What. 276. I mean, that's like, that's like a combo. Like, uh, let me find. Okay. So I have some, I have this on my YouTube channel a couple of times, picking up this 18 foot Tiki plunge, deep pool, 392. It says. I, I think it's closer to 410, 415, but I can pick that up alone. I don't love to, but I can. We also have, uh, we have this 18 foot dual lane. No, we got deep pool. This one, 18 foot dual lane, deep pool. That one. I, was the dual lane. I don't have any dual lane pools because I'm scared of the weight. No, I'm just, I'm just hesitant. But we bought, so I bought this 18 foot dual lane uh, deep pool. Um, season had already started, but we were still early, right? It's so warm here. Our, our season's long. Like they still have two in New Orleans. Um, and it rented so well, right? And we just kind of went through a weird period where I got paid in a ton of cash. So I just drove back over there and bought this beast right here. 22 foot, uh, purple hurricane. No, I bought the dual lane. Where's the dual lane? This one it says it's 572. Okay. Uh, that's probably. So they easy to manage. What you say? You need two, two people, three people too. Yeah, for, yeah. For the dual lines. Yep. So, so this is a two man job. But we did. Uh, I, I got a YouTube video up. Like Trevor and I just set up a camera. Like we just set up the GoPro and then picked this up and recorded it. And then I kind of went back. I think I put music to it or something, so it's not boring. But um, I mean, not it's it's not hard. You send two guys, not hard, not hard. And this thing crushed. Like, uh, hopefully, right there, none now. If they had more of these, I would have gone. And, and bought more of these because this thing crushed i mean i bought it the season was been going i probably bought this like mid -May, it and it went i think it made thirteen thousand bucks and jesus christ what would you rent it for three what do we do that one for i think Ooh, i upped it, I upped it to 375 because i started it i started it lower um uh, i started it lower and then um it it was going out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday. I'm like, screw this, dude. I'm going to 375. Still went out Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It was crazy. It never, it went 
like every day of every weekend up until school started. Now it's right. Now it's kind of a normal cadence, but oh, anyway, so I say, fun. I say all of that to say this, to, to, to address your, your dual lane question. So same reason I never bought any because the heavy slides were murder. Uh, we, we had two heavy slides last year that were single lanes. They were just older. So they were heavy murder, just flooded, like just terrible. I hated them. I honest to God thought about going 18 foot and below single lane, everything. But then uh, once I got serious about hiring and, and built my crew and, and they're a bunch of badass dudes, I said, screw this. Let's do dual lane. Those both of my duelings I bought this year, the only two duelings I have and have ever had, were so popular. It blew my freaking mind. And That's people were calling me. Yeah, people are calling me. I need a dueling for this weekend. I'm like, well, bro, I have I have two and they like they've been rented. It'll be, it'll be booked out. Like, what's up with that? Yeah, I get a lot of calls about them. I just, I just, yeah, I don't know. Nobody what's up has them? Nobody wants to get them. I only got a 16 footer because I was curious about it, but honestly, it really wasn't that bad. I got it from Tet Table too. It's it's nice. It's honestly a nice unit. Oh yeah. Honestly. Yeah, these are great. I, I absolutely love them. So I mean, I think, and this is ambitious of me, so it's probably not gonna come true. But I think next year I'm gonna buy I actually every water slide I buy next year might be a dual link, right? Because I'm gonna probably buy four, five, six, but I'm just gonna buy all dual lanes. Because when those combos, come in, though, what's that? Said those combos though. Yes. Like them combos are easy to flip. Them easy money, man. Yo, I got I and those toddler units. Every every dude, everybody's been talking mad shit about the toddler units. Every week they go out of my ear area. Every really? single week. Well, at least one of them. Yeah, I got two of them. Sometimes both. I'm gonna be right back. I left my own thing. Once a week, one of those things go out and they can fit in the garage. I'm about to push those things hard this winter. To yeah, go in garages and different stuff for like, you know what I mean? Yeah, my uh we have one toddler unit. It's been it's it's good. It's just I don't know, they just there are a lot of are you guys on Roy? Bucks, what toddler units you, like? you got, Justin? What'd you say? What toddler units you got? The bouncing angels ones. I got the Crayola one, and I got the freaking uh, the the um block party, the Lego one. So oh, it, they're God. both gender neutral. The jungle ones, I um, but I if you know what I mean, if you're gonna grab the, those ones, are just foolproof. Am I like what are they like? Fourteen like so much I'll call it like fourteen hundred bucks or something like that. Maybe like they're like they're fifteen, maybe like they're but they're a combo too. So it's a bounce house and a slide, but they're super small. And I charge so I charge two hundred for a regular bounce house. I two charge and they're dry only. And I charge two fifty for those little shits. And I charge three hundred for a regular combo. And I get it all day long. I'm probably going to raise my prices again now too. Oh wow. Yeah, we know to get those prices. My shit's from Hula Boo. That's cheap. the one I got the little five hundred dollar one because I ain't want to just jump out there just yet. But I did three hundred. Really... I did three hundred k this year though. You know what I mean? And I, I, I my average tickets at like five hundred something bucks. Go back up, Nick. You missed the pirate one on page two. I saw. Bouncing, I saw. Bouncing Angels thing is just nuts. Their site's crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find that. Like, they got a lot of shit. <laughs> hey, so they make everything custom and design. So every time they make a new one, they'll just throw it on the site because they have all the designs for it. Well, maybe it's this, huh? And they've been in business for a long time. Yeah, are those cool. like the tiny units, like 10 by 10 or whatever? I don't know. The, this, I mean, that one looked No, just the ones at the top. You're looking for the taller ones? Yeah, that I saw one. one on the weekend that were that's tiny. The one. Yeah, that, that's one. Like ten by nine. That's really small. So you're talking, that's fifteen this way. Like ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that will take one rolling. So you limit them to listen. You tell them straight up. And, and then you know, and I'm gonna let you guys know this right now. Their prices on their website are are like, just call a rep. Trust me. Yeah, I have uh let me see if I can find what I have of theirs. And it is it was insanely popular. Once school started to kind of settle down. Well, I don't see maybe it's interactive. It's a 
it's like a combo this uh no it looks like that it's a combo but then like the wall zippers up and rolls up and then you hook an obstacle course to it like this it's not either of these but it's just like this and i showed it last week that uh youtube video i had it last week i have that youtube video with us but it's like this where this is a combo like this is a regular combo yeah the bounce i i don't own any of these i've been thinking about it they have that obstacle course that attaches to the side and they're wild dude yeah and then this back wall has zippers and you just yep. roll it up and then it's got like a little whatever clip exactly and, and then you just set that little this little thing this is easy to move this sucker's big mine looks just like this but it's tropical themed and it's God, you got you got one of these Nick? yeah yeah it's the one that uh that youtube video i have i uh, what did you run it for what do you run it for 395 375 i, I want like freaking 400 bucks or 500 bucks for at least yeah we're huge uh, yeah we're we're we, we're cheaper here because our season's longer so everybody fucking drives the prices down Yeah, we go hard over here. Everybody's raising their prices. I'm, I love it over here. That, and then we're, yeah. on a, we're on a cash train in Buffalo. Everybody gets it. Everybody's got those envelopes handy. Yeah, dude, I wish well, uh, I, I, wish I, I was a lady, here where people would drive. The I, had, I had a lady call me. I had a lady call me from Michigan. She goes, she goes, why is, like, my, my husband's from Buffalo. That's why we're having a party in Buffalo. She's like, why does everybody like just hand each other envelopes of cash? Like, we don't do that in California. <laughs> like, oh. just like that, just something like that. I was, I was just laughing. That box. Just go put it back in the box. Thank you, move back. So, yeah, everybody just hands each other envelopes of cash. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. I have people that will call back. Well, can I do cash on delivery? I'm like, just pay that fifty dollar deposit, dude, and then COD all day long. All right, what else we got? Let's see. We got a little, oh, nobody's online right now at YouTube, but jump orange slides rent like crazy. That's what somebody said. And then somebody said, I need me a bush light. By the way, last week you mentioned a book list. Can you send it to me, please? Yeah, if you want the book list, uh, just DM me, you know, find me. Um, don't don't mention me in a comment on a YouTube video. Those are, those are clunky and hard to find. DM me somewhere, Facebook or Instagram. I'll send you the book list. Um, I've got another one I just started last night. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to bring up. We'll, we'll, we'll jump into that. Okay, so Tariq always talks about this book called Profit First, right? Profit First, Profit First, Profit First. I didn't read it. I've been thinking about reading it. What's up? Okay. Read it? I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you my take on it from Jump, okay? So I finished my, my list of books, like my stack, uh, and so I put Profit First in there so I could read that. Um, it's a point, right? I feel like that's a good book to read, Um when you're brand new, you know, you're reinvesting everything so you can make it. You're still working at your shitty nine to five. Like, um, it's a good book to read at that point because obviously it'll give you a blueprint of what to do down the line, but it's a good book to read. Like it would be a good book to read for you right now, Justin, because obviously you're at a place where you can focus on profit. It's pretty much where I'm at. Yeah. So, right. So anyways, that's what, and that's what, that's when you go, you go pop up, just go in the other room. Shh. Oh, you're okay. You guys good? Okay. So anyways, I start reading the book, right? And the <laughs> writing style of the author, like, I hate. I hate. It feels like, you know, those scammy Facebook ads where they're like, it's a video and they're super scammy and like super sales pitchy and slimy. And you click it and then the copy opens and they're right in the comment. The copy is like super long and it is all this stuff about how, you know, you're struggling and this will help you. Da, da, da. So the book is written like you literally can't pay any bills. You literally are struggling to where the point where you have no cash. All you can do is like you have a spending problem and you can't do anything but waste your money on more inventory because you're an idiot. And you can't run a business well. Like the whole thing really rubbed me bad to where like I'm reading it. Right. So I, I go to bed pretty early compared to most people. Right. Like 945. I'm Thank reading it getting fucking pissed. Like I'm like, I'm like really getting pissed to where I, I, I posted a, a Facebook post and some of you guys may have seen it, but I said on a scale of one to five, how much does this describe you? I said, anytime you get capital, 
you can't help yourself but spend it on expenses and waste it and you never pay yourself any profit, right? Because I'm like, this is so asinine, this book. I can't even read this book. I wake up the next day and I check the Facebook post. Everybody said that's what they do. So I was kind of like, I, maybe it's just, I don't like the writer <laughs> or the author. I don't know though, dude. It just rubbed me wrong because it was, uh, um, he's saying that all business owners are sick in the head basically that when they get revenue that comes in they spend it on expenses or or trying to grow the business so they can try and drive sales more so they can then make a profit but when they drive sales more they then have to just go cover the expenses that they made by investing on infrastructure and it's just fool's errand and we're all miserable laying at home stressed out with no money in our bank accounts i'm like I, i've been paying myself like not from day one, but like pretty, pretty close, dude. Like I, I bought out a company of nine old shitty units and, and that took me up to 12 because I had three before that. From that point forward, I paid myself from that. Not enough for a long time. No, not enough for a long time, but I paid myself. And so I just, the book just rubbed me so wrong to where I'm like, you don't got to be so over the top that we're miserable idiots with money. But, but that's the point of the Facebook post. I was like, maybe, maybe that's what everybody, you know, has no money to show and doesn't pay themselves. I don't know. I don't know. So anyways, what I kind of, the, the topic I wanted to cover on that note is please pay yourself. I'm in no way, shape or form a financial guru, right? I'm not a Dave Ramsey or a CPA. And there's a billion different ways you can do things. And, and I will say this, once I got through the opening of profit first, like I forced my way through it. Once I got to the tactical part, it did start to make more sense. I, I did not get that far into it. I had to switch to a new book. Like I just couldn't do it. Um, I, I will finish that book because it sounds like there's a lot of people that uh, could be helped by it, but I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I, had, I switched to a new book, but that being said, the, the comments on the Facebook post were like, right? Everybody basically answered, right? So the question was on a scale of one to five, how much does this describe you? Whenever you get revenue from your business, you use it to pay expenses or scale and don't pay yourself very much, if any. The answers were fours and fives from almost everybody. Like there was one person that popped in there that was a two. But I was, I was a little bit shocked. And so I'm like, okay, this is a good arena. Like, I'm going to finish the book at, at, at some point in time, but this is a good arena where I'm like, all right, maybe I can help people with this. Not, not that I know the tactics of what you should do, but I do know that because uh, uh, my wife owns a hair salon. So we're both, right. We're both business owners. I know how much we pay ourselves. Right. And I know how happy we are with that number and how good of a job we do. So I'm like, Maybe this is a conversation that, right? Because you don't talk about money, it's taboo. So I'm like, maybe this is a conversation that I should start because maybe I can help a whole bunch of people in this arena. I don't know. It was just very intriguing to me, the amount of people that don't pay themselves, like at all, like at all. It was crazy. So um, I'll open it up there for, for questions and or comments if you guys want to um Totally ignoring Facebook. Sorry, Facebook. Not, not, not paying themselves and not knowing how much they pay themselves is two different things, too, Nick. Like a lot of people like at those levels don't even run legitimate businesses. They aren't freaking paying as much taxes possibly could or should be. They're not reporting everything, taking a lot of cash, and you know what I mean? Buying here and there. And those are also the same people that we're talking about. A lot of yeah, them. and 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 in the beginning, right? Um, when the so jump off was, check, yeah, when the jump off was small, like everything was right. Well, I mean, back then it was Venmo. It was just the Venmo, right? And then the Venmo went to my bank account, and then I bought stuff. I, I mean, I don't remember how I had it all set up, but it was sloppy. But I, I, I didn't think it could be a business. Like I did not think this was an industry. I did not think this was a business that was sustainable when I started. I just didn't know better. I was naive. Um, and, but then as it grew, I'm like, oh shit, I don't need to worry about starting a real business. Like I already have one, you know what I mean? And from that point forward, just kind of right. And I, and, and I'll be frank, I fell into the camp of, I'd rather invest more 
money to grow the company so I can make, instead of making $1,000 this week, I can make a million dollars in five years, 100%, right? I paid myself just enough money to keep my wife off of my back and then went just lower than that, right? She was, there was always a level of tension between us of how much I did or didn't pay the family. That's what she called it, pay the family. Um, but, but I wanted to reinvest and I know I needed a lot of equipment at that time, right? Trailers, trucks, like I need a lot of stuff. But once you get all that stuff, it's like, dude, go pay yourself. You know what I mean? Yep. So I see a lot of people, what they'll do, and this is, a, this is I'm not CPA, but I'll tell you the move in this industry. This is the actual move that all of you guys should be thinking of, and you should run this by your CPAs, but um, they're going to be like, who are you talking to? Because he's a smart guy. So I will tell you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn my video on for this. So what you're going to want to do, is subscribe to party rental knowledge no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> go what you want to do is grow your business and for the first few years some people don't quit their jobs and then they'll go full-time get it to where you're making a decent amount of money maybe like 200 you know what i mean 300k a year something something really nice and then don't buy any equipment literally be a slumlord Think of yourself as a slumlord and just put no money in the business whatsoever as you can. Once you pretty much already did it to where you're going to be fine for a year and know that you can do that, only do repairs. Take like 150, you know what I mean? $200,000 in profit, whatever you can, ridiculous amount of money, and then go buy yourself a real, like you profit that in your own personal name and then go start a real estate company buy a warehouse so now your purse now your business expenses go even lower and then all the money you make can go towards that real estate company and you can make more money in a real estate company and it also takes money out of the property rental company so if you ever get sued they can only really go after the assets and they can't go after the building you don't want to have a building in a party rental company's name like i said i'm not a cpa i'm not an attorney whatever but go run that by somebody that's what a lot of people do in this industry this should be your main goals if you're thinking about it in this industry. Just yeah, and that's that's long. That's definitely long game stuff. But if if you analyze what you're saying or what that advice is, the advice that you're giving is not rob yourself and eat ramen noodles so you can grow your business. It's make wise decisions with the money. Whether you want to go ambitious and, and do what you just said and and you're hundred percent right. Right. You're hundred percent right. But, but make wise decisions with the money. Like I just, it, it's just crazy. So uh, uh, this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm going to tell you actually here, two things. Number one, this all just hit my radar like two nights ago. Okay. And, and I wasn't going to talk about it on this episode because it's so new in my brain. I haven't had time to process or really think through anything, but at the same time, I'm like, no, this needs to be brought out into the world. Right. If I can bring any good in the world, let me get some money into some people's freaking bank accounts. Um, so this is all very raw. The other thing is what I would, if I was starting all over from scratch, having knowing everything I know, right? Or put it differently, the next business I start, which it, it will come and it, I'm hoping it will come soon, right? What we are going to do is we are going to set up a percentage of money, right? And this, I, I am taking from the book here, right? But we're going to set up a percentage of money that when a thousand dollars comes in, X percent of that goes into a bank account. That's profit done. Can't touch it. It's profit. You know what I mean? Then we'll have the rest of the money left over. And that's the money that you can go buy new shit with. Yeah. Because, because if you think about it, it doesn't, you're doing the exact same thing to yourself though, but backwards, right? So instead of buying organic bell peppers, you're buying the bullshit from Walmart for 68 cents because all the money goes to the business and then you take the little tiny bit, just flip it on its head. Your business will be just fine. You'll figure out how to run it well. And you'll figure out how to work within that budget of, let's just say 30% goes into the profit world. You know what I mean? This, you also really, like when I kept like trying to, not, as like, to, like obviously not get in trouble by telling you I'm not a CPA, but you really should get a CPA because they'll save you a shit ton of money. Not only that, they'll tell you ways like you can make more money because like by doing things like suddenly you just saved a whole bunch of money by doing uh, certain things. Like 
um, like, oh, did you know you could write your phone bill off? You could write this off. You could write that off as, a, as an expense. Um, and move it. Like, and, oh, and, and, like and, Nick, Nick, you know that you could write off part of your house payments because you're using this office for work, right? Yep. And, and what I did this year, <laughs> like, I, I moved. Like, so we, 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 like, we've been writing that off, right? Because Amy, my CPA, very, yeah. very smart, knows all that stuff. But what she never wow. told me, right? And and shame on her that I had to think of it myself. But I'm like, well, if I can write off my cell phone, shouldn't the jump off be paying my cell phone bill? Why in the world is you know my bank account and Michelle's yes. bank account paying the jump off cell phone bill? No. So I moved all those bills, car insurance, right? Uh, uh, it moves to the jump off. Um, like my truck note. That moves to the jump off, right? That's the jump off's truck. It's not my truck. It's the jump off truck, right? Because it's under the freaking commercial insurance. Like you just all... get to drive it because you're the CEO of the jump off. And and real talk, real talk. Unless I take my little boy over to, you know, drop him off at school, which I do sometimes in the morning, bro. I don't drive like anywhere that's not a jump off related trip. Like this time of year, and then it'll switch obviously and and turn into, uh, let's get lit related trips, but. It's like and that that truck is such a business truck. Like I don't drive anywhere. Like I drive to Harbor Freight, you know what I mean? I drive, but I'm going there, I'm going there to buy supplies for the jump off. So truck note comes out of the jump off account. Cell phone comes out of the jump off account. Um, I just moved I moved like two or three other things over there this year. I don't remember what they all are off the top of my head. But like all the things that you you pay, like make the business pay for that, dude. And if you're new and you got four bounce houses, you know what I mean? You might not be generating enough revenue to make all that happen. You're paying for your inflatable office, you know, and you're paying for your, your event hawk and, and maybe your gas, but it's like, but as soon as you've got the revenue, like, dude, move all that stuff over to, you're writing it off as a business expense anyway, move it over to the business, move it over, get it away from yourself. Do you guys have questions on the money stuff? Like I, I know I know you do. I mean, I'm gonna rephrase that. Please unmute and ask your questions on the money stuff. My favorite interview question of all time when I do job interviews, at the end of the interview, I do not ask them, do you have any questions? I require them to ask me two questions because they've got at least two questions on their head that they won't ask you, but they want to know. When you make them, they can't think of anything on the spot and they ask you the questions you want to know. So so please unmute your microphone and ask two questions. And, and look, part of that's a selfish ask too, because I feel very strongly that this is an area where this industry, you know, the inflatable industry specifically is on its ass upside down backwards and inside out, right? Because we all started them as side hustles with jobs. And so like we we're, we're all stuck in this, but like, let's not pay ourselves thing. And I'm like, no, dude, no, 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 no. I want to change that. I want to get people uh, 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 thinking differently about the business where it's like, no, no, shouldn't I, be your job. No, we're saving them, but Mercedes hasn't told me. Oh, that needs more uh, freaking. Change. All right, Nick, how much, per, what percentage do you pay your employees? What percentage That's do you save? Right. And then what percentage do you pay you? Um, so I have... I, I didn't ever do it by percentages. Um, I, my next business, I will for sure. And I may restructure the jump off uh, to do that. I have, but I have a salary. Like I have a salary. So basically um, the jump off pays me $60,000 a year salary. And let's get lit pays me $60,000 a year salary. That is what it is. That, it literally comes from, uh, it literally comes from the, the, the payroll company. Like it got direct deposited in my account yesterday from payroll. You know what I mean? Um, at any given point, I can just grab the checkbook, write myself a check, and it's called an owner draw. And that can go straight into the bank account. But, uh, you know, and then, you know, then I move all those other bills over to the jump off to where when I say I have a 60,000, so I'm going I'm to I'm put it a little different. I'm going to tell the story a little different. So back when I worked for Journeys, um, I was a district manager uh, when I quit, right? And as a district manager for Journeys, they give you a new car every three years because you drive so many freaking miles, right? I was I was doing 50,000 miles a year at some points. 
So you get a brand new car every year. You don't pay for anything. You don't pay for gas. You don't pay for oil change. You don't pay for tires. You don't pay for windshields. Nothing. Car washes, nothing, right? They give you a computer. They also pay for the internet at your house because you work at your house a, a, a decent amount. You have a company card on that company card. Anything you buy your employees, right? Lunch, uh, you know, whatever. All the miscellaneous stuff goes on that company card. Your own lunch goes on that company card because you're out working at a different place every day, right? And so those are your main basic, those are your main basic perks, so to speak. That's how they kind of sell them to you, right? They're perks of the job. They, they actually add that into your salary. They say your salary is X, your car costs Y, the insurance costs Z, and they add that all up. They say, we invested in you this much money and they add all that stuff up. And so my thinking just, right, I did that for so long. My thinking was, oh, let me just, I'm basically gonna go mimic what they used to do and do that in my business to where I made my business then go pay all those things that they used to pay for and then I take my salary, right? And so basically what you end up doing is my salary at the jump off is $60,000. I pay taxes on that, the whole, right? It comes, I pay FICA and all that bullshit coming out of the payroll company. That's 60K. But then just like at Journeys, that 60K then doesn't have to go pay anything but the house note, basically the house note, right? And the gas and water because everything else is a business expense so our che Michelle and I's checking account only pays the things that we use, not the things that the jump off or let's get lit uses, if that makes sense. So it's not, it's not a percentage thing. Um, it's just, and, and the salary was the salary that Amy deemed whatever the right number. I think we're going to have to do a sober spreadsheet podcast. <laughs> <laughs> sober spreadsheets we'll do those on we'll do those on thursday because we'll all be hungover but uh but but yeah so basically right and and the salary all comes from, this is all uh uh coming from amy right because she's the cpa she knows what to do she knows how much to pay me she knows she knows all these things but but once the salary portion got put in is where my brain clicked and was like oh wait a minute the jump off should be paying for everything that we use the jump off for, you know what I mean? And so boom, it all, and, and the jump off pays those, right? I have two businesses, which is going to, it gets confusing quickly. Um, right. So what, what should let's get lit pay? I just, I don't know. I have the jump off pay it because the jump off generates revenue 52 weeks a year. Um, you know, late December and January is not very much money, but it, it generates revenue 52 weeks a year. So it, it pays those bills. It, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think it doesn't matter because I own two businesses. So it doesn't matter what accounts they come out of, if I remember correctly on that. But if you just restructure everything like that to where, right, just think about what you want to pay yourself. This is, this is the advice I'll give you shooting from the hip. If your rental company this year is going to do 65K in revenue, your salary maybe is 25 and you just pay yourself $25,000 divided by 52 every week, every two weeks, however you want to structure it, right? Pre payroll, I paid myself weekly, but, uh, uh, and then the rest of the money then gets distributed where it needs to go. Now, I, the, the caveat to all of this is that so many of us are side hustlers uh, uh, in the early days where you still have a nine to five that is paying you 60, 70, $80,000, whatever it is, that the business money doesn't need to do anything. So it can then go to scale itself. So you can then leave the job. That's the one component that I haven't really thought through much. And I haven't, um, I haven't figured out what the advice is for the inflatable industry because I just don't, I just don't know the answer yet. It's too early, but at some point in time, it's like you should start moving stuff away from you and, and, and into the business. But my gut says it should wait till you quit your job, right? Let the, let your job that Be you don't out. like that you want to leave, pay the bills. You cut out. Oh, he yeah. says your gut says what? That you should wait. Let your job that you don't like that you want to leave pay the bills. 
why your company can scale. Yes. Well, you, well, you don't need to take a salary. Don't take a salary. We don't need to make a profit. Don't make a profit. Just don't get stuck in that to where when you then do go leave your company, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're strapped for cash constantly because you're in the cycle. You're in the cycle of not paying yourself any money. That's silly. You know what I mean? So Nick, I got a question. So I'm looking at doing bounce houses and equipment rental because I'm in I already have all the tools and equipment. Plus it'll help me regenerate some of the money. I tell my wife I spend on these tools. <laughs> so, but I'm struggling with the insurance as far as splitting the two, because I called Fieldman Group, they all. Did you guys lose Justin or was it just, or was it my internet? That I'm here. Or was it a different Justin? Uh, different, different, just leap wild. He was talking and it went away. And my phone, my phone went weird. My YouTube over there went weird. Are you still there, Justin? Leap wild, Justin? That must have been him. So, yeah, I don't really know what it is. Hey, right. everybody take a shot. Wait for Nick to come back. Oh, there. See, it was me. It was me. He's back. Yeah. Did you, it lose, was all your, okay. did you lose all your streams everywhere? Or? Uh, I just ended the TikTok one because there was two people on it. Uh, but, but yeah, everything kind of went, everything kind of glitched out. Like my, phone, my phone, yeah, it was the first time I ever done it. But yeah, my phone went over to three, uh, uh, to 4G and then clicked back onto Wi Fi. So something bad happened there. Anyways. Um, but no, Justin, leap off Justin. I did not catch the end of your question. I wasn't talking. No, it's the other Justin. It was, it was Shane Adam. Oh, oh Shane. But there's no other Justin here. You're driving me nuts. <laughs> cool rental. So, so what was your question, Shane? So I'm worrying about how to split the businesses or do I have to? And as far as That's how just... that is going to equate into taxes and money and all that is if I do have to do two de separate businesses, how much more complicated does that get? <laughs> this is a uh, CPA it, question for sure. It, it gets, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed with that. Uh, <laughs> it, does, it does get freaking complicated though. Um, and your, your situation is always going to be unique to you. And that's one of the reasons, like, it's illegal for us to give financial advice. But we're giving you, right. advice. we can give you our opinions. And then, and then part of that's just our opinions, not having any, like, like, actual degree or anything in this and not knowing your full situation and just what you're telling us right now. Correct. So, yeah. Like, yeah, so it's like, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I would literally just, like, these are questions you definitely want to ask your CPA. Your CPA's job is to enlighten you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your um, job is to deal with what your CPA tells you. Yeah, it, right. It, but, but what I would tell you, too, is, so I was on, this is a while ago, but um, Tariq did a live where it was, like, website, website design boot camp or something like that, right? It was a great freaking video. Um, where he's going through and picking out like what's wrong with our websites, what we should have here, what we should have there, whatever. Um, I, I, I made a lot of changes to my website after, after that little webinar. But one of the guys that he used as an example has a bounce house and water slide business. And then there's a link that says tools and you click it and he literally rents tractors and skid steers and jackhammers. Not joking. It's all on his inflatable office website. You can rent everything in one place. Well, and that's kind of what I'm going for is out here in Idaho, you have, there's a big break between what you can rent dad for the party coming up and what mom rents for the actual party. And so I want to combine them where, hey, you can kill two birds with one stone, one delivery, and you guys can 
do everything you want to do. Yeah, got you. Well, Tariq knows who that is because when he was uh, talking about that website, like he knew that person, whoever that person was, whether he's a client or whatever. Um, but I will, I will do me a favor. Wherever is easier for what you, DM me on question? DM me on Facebook or Instagram, just so I have you, and then I'll ask Tariq tomorrow who that guy is. So that way you can at least go see his website, if not get in touch with him. I don't know how open he was. He wasn't talking on the, on the webinar, um, but I'll at least get you his website and maybe you can, maybe you can touch base with him so you can get a little bit more information from him. I would appreciate that. Yeah. So just DM me somewhere, find me somewhere so I can get you the information tomorrow. I will. But to answer your question in short, though, like when it's two businesses, it does start to get kind of kind of confusing because there's just it starts to have so much going on. Uh, when I started, let's get lit um, to be like I did it the, the first year I ever did it. Like it was just like a side hustle show up, shake hands, whatever, take the money. Um, after that, though, the next year I made it a legitimate business. Um, and so the first thing I did, and I don't know if I did this right or not, but the first thing I did was actually call Cosio and say, Hey, you know what I mean? Uh, can I add this other business under the same insurance umbrella for slightly more money? Right. Cause I'm a bounce house guy. I was thinking insurance for Christmas lights when it turns out it's not that big of a deal, but, um, uh, and, and I believe her name was Carol, but, uh, she was like, she, I didn't even finish my sentence. And she said, no, start a new LLC. I was like, well, what I was thinking, no, start a new LLC. I'm like, okay, got it, start a new LLC. So at, so then I made two separate businesses from there for the Christmas lights. Uh, it just didn't make sense to put it under one umbrella. Now, that being said, you got to think about, do you want to hire, and shout out to Fred for this piece of wisdom. We were on the phone yesterday and he said this. Do you want to hire a bounce house business to do your Christmas lights? Or do you want to hire a Christmas light business? You probably want to hire a Christmas light business because you're going to be average ticket on those yeah. homes. Hey, hey, average ticket on the Christmas light homes is $1,400. The off chance that someone to spend $1,400 on Christmas lights from a bounce house guy, low. Now, they obviously already are. Hang on one second. Hey, can you guys go out and play, please? Thank you. Now they obviously are paying a bounce house guy to put a, you know, fourteen hundred dollar Christmas lights on their house, but it's it's marketed as a Christmas light business. You know what I mean? So the delta between those two businesses is, is, is big, where the Christmas light world is high end. Equipment rental, I don't think they care, right? You're a rental company and you rent bounce houses and equipment. I think they'll just chuckle, like they go, oh, "Man, look at this guy, he's ambitious," and then they'll rent whatever they want. That's just my opinion on that okay yeah i mean i just i got all this stuff that i don't necessarily use every day and it's like well i just i got a four thousand dollar cement mixer sitting in my backyard that just stares at me every day and it's like huh so if i can make some money back on it and you know get mom off my back then why wouldn't i if i'm already doing a kind of rental side anyways yeah, yeah. No, I agree 100%. I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah, like you said, it's sitting there. So I don't know if you guys know who, uh, and I don't remember Adam's last name off the top of my head, but uh, on YouTube, he's the tent guy. Adam his, Keller. Keller, okay. So his TikTok, I mean, I'm going to look it up so I can quote it verbatim because his tiktok is freaking killer side hustle real world side hustles i think is what it's called yeah his tiktok's real world side hustles I'm real world sure. okay so go go look up his tiktok real world side hustles uh he's got quite a i quite like, a like his tiktok page yeah you said you do or don't no i do he's got some good advice on there good good stuff um and so right so he started this he started a long time ago and uh i made a video or two with him Way back in the day, he had like, you know, 5,000 uh, followers. Now it's like, last time I looked, it was over 60. But um, I, I popped on there the other day to post something and his videos always come up first for me because it knows I interact with his videos. And he starts talking about if you want to start a business, in his opinion, the best thing to do 
is have something people can rent from you because you can buy a thing and then rent it out and then it pays for itself and then it makes revenue. And I was like, never thought of that. But realistically though, the, the, the rental model for a business is actually pretty killer. And then he goes in depth on video after video after video. He's got crazy, these crazy high-end glamping tents. He's got mobile bathrooms, like big trailer, like nice, big trailer bathrooms, right? Just goes on and on and on, all the stuff that he rents. But I'm like, yeah, dude, the rental, the, the rental is an amazing way to make a revenue. And if you do it with, right, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do with, whether it's silverware or tractors, it doesn't matter. And if you've already got the uh, captive audience, so to speak, then yeah, I think it's, I think it's money. Okay, I appreciate it, but I'll definitely DM you tomorrow, and thanks for answering my, all my questions. Cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, dude. You bet. All right, I'm going to check through the uh, check through the comments here. Bobby asked, do I do the haul off still? No, I do not. No, I do not. That was actually never, even though I had t-shirts, it was actually never a real business. So uh, it was slow for the jump off beginning of 2021, I want to say. And we had this weird, right? So I'm in Southern Louisiana. So it doesn't get very cold here, but every now and then one of those cold fronts will push through and it, you know, it gets down to 20 degrees or something here, but it's so humid that the 20 degrees, and I'm from Salt Lake City, born and raised, the 20 degrees feels like you're on the, in the South Pole at minus 40. It's crazy. So nobody was renting. And so um, I had a buddy in randomly, Shane, in Idaho who uh, had started a trash, a junk hauling business. And so I was like, hey, I, and I was helping him, right? I was mentoring him to try and scale the, the junk hauling business. Um, and so I text him and say, hey, bro, you are like, if I low key, like bite your style, like, are you cool? And he's like, yeah, whatever, bro. So I started a junk hauling business on the back of Facebook marketplace only, right? And I had a Facebook page, but, and started hauling junk. And like, it took off like that. And it was what we did in the slow time. We had some big, we, we helped some families, like a family of four, right? In a two-story house, move into a new house, right? It was crazy all the shit we were doing. Um, but long story short, the two things happened. Number one, the jump off and let's get lit got so busy. It was just like, I, I just couldn't fit junk hauling in, right? Using the jump off trailers and doing all this craziness. I just, it, it got to kind of get in the way. The other thing that happened is, we don't have a dump here. We have what's called a transfer station where you take all of your stuff to like a small warehouse. Then they put it in semis and truck it to a dump. They charge uh, uh, a lot of money. So it used to be 35 bucks for 600 pounds and then per pound after that. It's now gone up to $60 because of uh, one year ago, right now, Hurricane Ida destroyed everything. And so they were so busy, they raised their price to $60 minimum. So the, like, basically we were just priced out. Like I couldn't give somebody a bid for something, correct? Right? Cause if you need me to come pick up two couches, you're paying 60 bucks for the dump fee. Plus you got to pay my gas, right? Which gas went at, at some point in time, there was freaking 475 in Louisiana and it's cheap here generally. Then you got to pay labor, then we got to make a profit. So after all that said and done, it's like, yeah, it'll be 450 bucks to come pick up two couches. And they told me to F off. So we decided to, we decided to part ways with the junk hauling. It was fun. It was very fun. And if you're bored and got nothing to do, I highly suggest starting that up. It was very fun. But no, we don't haul junk anymore. You okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you do. You said, oh, no, no, no. You're asking the question twice now. Um, all right, what else we got out there? Uh, John said, profit first will keep you just far enough outside of a financial comfort zone. You'll keep answering the phone and keep running rentals out first being comfortable or feeling like there's no profit in it for you. Yeah, I could definitely, I could definitely see that. I don't know. I haven't read the book far enough yet to, to, to render full opinions on the book. So I'm going to, I'll pass on that until I get a little bit further into the book. Um, for those of you that are readers, I was very surprised last week. Uh, one of my two topics I wanted to cover was books. 
which I thought I was like, dude, the whole stream's gonna die. Everybody's gonna log off. I start talking about books, and it was like wildly popular, and everybody was super stoked on it. I got people asking for the book list and everything. Um, so I finished Ego is the Enemy, which um, I strongly suggest for everyone. It's a much better book once you start having some success. I read it a while back when I was an employee. Um, and I, I had a lot of responsibilities at that time, but it just didn't. And I loved how the book was written. It's, written, it's beautifully written. Ryan Holiday is an amazing author. Um, and it hit well, and I liked the book. I went back and randomly reread it as now a successful entrepreneur, and it, it hit so much better. Like it humbles you, but, but not in a bad way, like in a, in a refocuses you type of way. But anyway, so I finished Ego is the Enemy. I was going to go reread another book and uh, I decided F that I'll read profit first because uh, Tariq always talks about how it changed his life. So <laughs> I can't make it through that book. I just, the writing style was so bad. It's like six paragraphs redescribing, right? And I'm a writer. So like, this is coming from an interesting place, but six paragraphs redescribing the same thing, the same point he already made. Like I just it was bad. I, I just couldn't do it. So I put that down and I don't remember, hopefully the person is on this because I'd love to give you a shout out. But somebody uh, said, somebody suggested the E-Myth and that book has been suggested to me a billion times. I never bought it, never cared. And then somebody suggested it to me after last week's little, right? My little book thing. And I started reading the E-Myth. Dude, I plowed through like a quarter of the book. No, probably a third of the book in one night. Like I, like, I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. I slept until 6.30 today because I was up so late last night reading that book. Very, very well written. I really like his writing style, um, the way he jumps in and out of conversations with himself and the person he's uh, 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 mentoring is really cool. I really like the writing style on that. But then the points he's making are very aha. Like, as I'm reading it, I'm like, oh my God. Like, I was picking out things that I do that I thought were related to my ADD that I have. And as he's, right, as I'm reading the book, I'm like, maybe I'm picking out things that he's talking about, you know, being basically, he, what he's saying is inside of you, there's an entrepreneur, a tech a entrepreneur who's like the vision guy, the technician who's the work guy who enjoys the work and the manager who keeps all the shit organized, right? And, and, they all are at odds with each other at all times in most people and most people that start a business aren't entrepreneurs. They're technicians that were good at something. So they go start a business in something they're good at. And, and then they all fight the, their personality. Those three personalities inside of people all fight with each other. I thought it was wildly interesting. Couldn't put it down. I will read it tonight before I go to bed. Uh, but the e-myth, the e-myth, that, that, that's been a pretty good book. And, and and I think will help. The, the reason I like to read is because I know it'll help me grow and, and learn. I have this weird thing where I have to be learning at all times, or it's like just get so bored I could die. Um, but but now as things have kind of progressed in my life, like kind of with profit first, like I'm gonna finish the book for other people's sake. Like I, I see an opportunity where a lot of people have a lack of knowledge in that area. So I'm going to finish the book so I can try and go help them. You know what I mean? I think the E-Myth is that times a hundred. So if you guys want to go read a, a book <coughs> or if you are a reader, you know what I mean? E-Myth, highly, highly recommend. Are right, you guys got, got other questions, other things you guys want to talk about? Um, Tariq, go. Well, check it out. I, go, I've go. got a question. I've got a question. So here in the last couple of weeks, I had a tent manufacturing business and with a business partner, things fell apart pretty badly. And I was able to acquire all of the, uh, you know, manufacturing equipment. I don't want to do big because I can't find employees. That's a huge problem around the world. I'm sure every one of us on here know that. And, you know, you guys are in the rental. I'm in the trying to service the rental and, I want to. I want to know what rental companies have problem finding. You know what what products is it? Weight sacks? Is it block covers? You know gutters? What can one or two or even three man crew do to 
service the rental company right now to fix a problem because you know i'm at a right now where we can't find the employees so i need to downsize my thoughts and downsize what i'm doing and get into you know what's going to make some money what's going to pay my bills but what's going to service and create a uh, solution to a problem yeah i think that's a amazing question uh when it's coming from tents I personally am not the person to answer that, but yeah, there you go. Go ahead, Justin, go. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I honestly, that's a really good question. I don't know that answer fully. Um, There's really like, like, I'm the worst person to ask because I can find pretty much everything anywhere. Cause I know everybody. Right. Right. But you know, you know, so Adam might know, something like actually better suited that might be like search smart like because everybody needs sidewalls everybody needs stuff but it's almost like my season's ending too so i can't even think of what i would buy right now or pre-summer but like certain people need certain things at certain times and and then i also feel like to be honest with you like to be like to be fair like sidewalls i wouldn't do sidewalls because i try to always buy the same sidewall from the same person so they all match so I wouldn't right. even want to be buying, you know what I mean? Random sidewall. I would like uh um are you talking about like metal and stuff like that too? Or are you more no, 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 no. You know, uh mainly like I wanna not that I want to get out of tent top, you know. I spent 20 years building uh pole tents for a company and broke off four years ago, made my own, then COVID hit, and as we all know, like shit happened, right? Yeah. So you know, with that, you know, I'm a vinyl guy, I'm not a metal guy, I don't yeah. do metal, but I can build anything like I'm a heat welder by trade and I'm like literally trying to find that knack, you know, like I've got a uh, ass load of scrap vinyl that's perfect for weight sacks. You know, I've thought about building, you know, I've got enough to build over a thousand weight sacks, but is it worth it for me to put the time in to build those weight sacks? Are they going to sit around? Are they going to build, you know, are they going to make me money within a short time or am I going to take 10 years to build yeah, nobody or to sell a hundred of them? Sacks. Everybody uses water barrels and if it isn't water barrels, they use blocks before they go weight sex. Right, right. And see, that's the info I need because like right now, like I'm buying a new, or I'm not buying, but I'm renting a new location and we're getting ready to fire back up my business because it got shut down. My investor's in the hospital and he called me two weeks ago and he said, hey man, you know, it's done. It's over, close the doors. I'm like, well, we've got three employees. We busted our ass four years trying to make a business and you know, the money man pulled the trigger. Well, I've been saving some money. So I was able to start my own shit. So my point to it really is, is like, man, like I'm, I'm talking to all you guys, you know, like what is it in the market that's needed? What can we do as a small town company of, you know, three employees, but you know, I can knock out a 40 by 80 in one day, pull tent, but no more, you know, I want to figure out what I can do to service the rental industry. You know, once I've got into servicing the rental industry i've learned hey it's cool it's fast paced you guys are cool you know everybody's like me you know we're small town guys we're big town guys but we're all blue collars we're out to make our money we're out to work hard for our money you know and you know you see a lot of these guys that sit around on their ass and they don't want to work hard for the money and they want it easy and i guarantee you not one of you guys you know that are rolling around those bounce houses that are setting up those tents are at all sitting on your ass you know taking easy money so you know I don't know. It's kind of like, this is all new for me. You know, I'm trying to find new avenues. Um, It's not like we're a desperate company. I've got a few cells that look pretty, right? But I'm looking for the future. I'm looking who I can service, what I can service. And, you know, with the employee problem, how can I service it with just a few people? So, you know, can't go for that big industry because I'm not like Aztec. I'm not Anchor. I'm not these guys that have been around for years. You know, I'm just a new guy that got lucky four years ago and, you know, had to shut down because of whatever, but now I'm here to start my own. So really that's the question is, you know, what is it that people are having problems finding and that are vinyl and what, and you know, how can I help solve that problem? I've got, all right, I got, I got a couple I'm going to throw at you that are just random on the top of my head. <clears throat> so most sandbags suck because the, I use rocks because they, everything yeah. falls, the shit all falls out of them. Right. So go run with that however you want, but just make the freaking Velcro close the whole thing shut. 
no no little gaps because the bag inside always right because i keep the rocks inside the bag but the bag is always going to break i'm not about to spend the day paying somebody or doing it myself to freaking duct tape the bag shut so make <laughs> make a damn He's got white vinyl too. That's the shit. He's gonna go buy a bunch of colored vinyl or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing that um, I think is something that right because I I can't work with vinyl on on a right. I got a freaking sewing machine that I bought at a store. I don't have a vinyl sewing machine. Uh, if I did, I may have already made this. It's something that I wanted to make. So if you wanna if you wanna fuck around a little bit, we can. But because I can sell the shit out of it, but a bag that holds the stakes to the bounce house and then I want a pouch on the front of it that holds this, right? It right. goes in. Right. And then I want on the other side, another little pouch that holds the small stakes that, uh, the, the hold down the tarp. So that way. Right. right. And then I also want here, I got like a, hold on, let me grab it. It's right here on the back of the door. It always sits on the back of the door. I made this on a random ass wing as like a prototype not being able to work with vinyl at all right but so it's got this uh let's see Brody, please be quiet thank you so it's got a little thing right here to hold your hammer right your hammer slides in there it needs to be much more sleek than that and then this is the pouch dude that holds this right on the front then there's handles and then inside go the stakes and then on this side a little thing to hold the tarp stakes and then Nick nice. made a ghetto Gucci bag. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the house, house Louis Vuitton. That's right, right. But that way, right? Because uh, so so the backstory on that is I buy units from Spacewalk uh, right over there in Kenner, and every time they give you like a vinyl bag for the stakes, like it's just I don't I have no I have no idea why they do that. And so I approached them. I said, Hey, can you guys like let's partner up, whatever? But they're like backed up, so I'm still trying to work on it with Spacewalk. Uh, but I was like, dude, we can build a fucking bat. Like, I don't know what anybody else does. Like, I have no idea how you guys get your stakes and hammer right over to the where you're going to set up the bounce house. We have the bags that that spacewalk makes. The handles break off of them, right? They just a a a, a back notion that they just dreamed up. I'm like, dude, this could crush. But like I said, if you want to mess, with, like, dude, I could sell the shit out of them on my freaking on my strap store, you know, jump off store. Like, I tell you what, I could build. So we need to partner up on it. Yeah. So there you go. So that's that's one I think that has a need that nobody knows they need. But I love those freaking bags from Spacewalk. Um, the other one that I would love is if somebody doesn't want those, uh, a vinyl bag that goes on my freaking the back of my rolls all, to where because on the back of my roll, not the back of the rolls all, but like. By that, if the, it held the stakes on the rolls all, yeah. And so, so Josh has Josh's uh, dollies have like stake holders on them, and I, and I talked to Tommy about it, and he's they like, hurt. We, put them, we put them on, but blah 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, I don't know the answer. I think the bag is the answer for the stakes, right? Because then they just go as a pile on the top of the freaking dolly, and you dolly them back there. But on the back of the rolls all, I have like a $3 uh, cargo net, mini cargo net that I bought from Harbor Freight that just the rolling straps just go in. So that way their rolling straps are always attached to the freaking dolly. And so I want to make, I wanted to make one out of vinyl that just fits the rolls all perfectly to where the rolling straps go in. And, it, and if I can get Tommy to, you know, me and Tommy are supposed to do a, a, a deal with, with the rolling straps. But I already make rolling straps for freaking Jolly Dolly. You know what I mean? You can make the same vinyl piece that goes on the Jolly Dolly and the straps slide in. All right, Nick, I do have one question for you. This is my first weekend where pretty much every day of the week is nothing but solid rain. How far out in advance do you call the customer and say, hey, I'm not, I'm not doing this event. The weather's too bad. Is it like the day before or... I don't you just see you don't, I don't. I don't. You just drop them. No, I've never, I've never can't. We're, we're sending it no matter what. Okay. Nope. okay. Nice. My question is leaping wild is uh -huh. what do you do with that fancy I have it. Hit and uh, headphones? No. What do you do with those? Mm. fancy? Cause I know you're oh my God. Doing other stuff. Uh, a few <laughs> years ago, like right when COVID hit and we all got those stimulus checks, 
I was like, oh, I'm going to make it big. I'm going to make it big <laughs> streaming. So I went out and bought all the best equipment I could. It didn't work. So now it's just here. I can talk about bounce houses with the pro setup so people know who I am. People take right. notes. That's what's up. Uh, but no, to answer your question, uh, so a year ago, the, uh, <laughs> last, no, a year ago this weekend was Hurricane Ida, which like – it didn't crush New Orleans, so you guys didn't hear about it. Like like Katrina, it was way worse than Katrina, and uh, I didn't I didn't cancel a single. A lot of people canceled their party, which then canceled their, which then canceled their their event. We sent four units the day before Hurricane Ida ruined all of our lives. We sent four units. We just went and got them the night before. But I don't mm. I don't I've never canceled ever. That's another thing. I haven't done a night pickup. Luckily, everyone pretty much wants to rent overnight, and they're okay paying the extra money, which is awesome. Yes. Not complaining. Uh, if anyone does need me to pick it up that night, how do y'all handle lighting? Do y'all have like shop lights you bring out, or well, first of all, I don't. Lights? I don't pick up that night unless I like absolutely have to, and I don't set up my mm -hmm. times until past like I. I try to always do my last delivery or pick up to be like, like, so it, right. I'm about to switch it to eight o'clock. It normally is nine, but I'm about to switch it to eight. Cause it's pretty much like eight o'clock is about to be like, start getting really, really dark over here. It's almost like probably like eight 45. It's already under nine now. It's just been dark for a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I don't even know. Yeah. I usually have a few hours. Yeah, actually. Yeah, for, for us. So the way I've got our rental set up, there's no cutoff time. You can, like somebody has a bounce house where this upcoming Saturday, like a small ass stupid bounce house from four to 10 and that's their six hours and there's no extra fees. Cause I just let people, I want as little friction as possible. So, mm -hmm. but we ain't bro. We ain't going at 10 Oh one to go get the thing. Right. No, we just go get it tomorrow in the morning. Um, Word when we do night pickups though, um, I've gotten away from them as much as I can. But when you have, like, when we do, this, like, 4th of July, you rent a slide from X time to X time. We pick up every single thing we sent Friday that night. If, if it ends that night, same Saturday. Uh, this year, we did same Sunday because it was a Monday, 4th of July. Um, yeah, you just take uh, headlights, like the little headlamps. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then yeah, those I, are fire. I, yeah, that's, get that's a magnetic weird. one and you could like that's like dual so I, I got one that's like it's a headlamp it's got light lights on it and then you freaking pop the front off of it so it's like two headlights so you still got one on your freaking head and the other one you can slap on the side of your like rolls all or your freaking big herc you know what yeah. i mean and then uh, uh no 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 big herc rolls all yeah big herc <laughs> man that, that big, yo that big herc's like no joke man you'd be surprised how much stuff i got going on with that like that thing uh is a beast. I want they're supposed to be coming out with a, like a smaller version of it too, with the rechain. Like you know what I love about it too? If it like you literally can have two batteries, or if anything happens with a battery, like you can have an extra one and just slide in real quick. That's like, nice. Yeah, that and mine. The you have to unscrew, unhot glue it. Because I work at a battery place, so I was like, hmm, if these batteries do go out, they're just eighteen NBs, which I could get them for twenty bucks piece. I pay what the cost is because i know the owner that's pretty good i don't know what uh austin's paying for him but dude if i were you i'd start building dollies those things are freaking oh i would if i knew how to weld Whew. i don't know how to weld <laughs> man dude got, if you know you know how to build to, dollies I man i wouldn't even build 10 bags build go build a dolly man it's there's money money yeah. there. <laughs> i paid four grand for an electric dolly man i've never <laughs> in my if someone told me you're gonna buy that two years ago, I'd have been like, "You're crazy." There, yeah. You know. And you had to, and you had to wait how long? Or in your car, right? <laughs> like, like, yeah. I, I was like, that, "Do I need to take insurance out on this this dolly?" <laughs> but I, but what I think about is crazy about the the dolly world. Not no, I said that bad. The dolly industry is, uh, the manual dolly market is wide like the amount of people that are going to pay four grand is great right but i don't 
we're sponsored by rolls all i got no interest in going after rolls all and building all that stuff the manual dolly market is where i get that's probably over the history of my youtube channel the most often question is where'd you get the black dolly the, the <laughs> right Which, that thing looks like a hay bale mover it is <laughs> the Harbor Freight one? <laughs> no, no, it's from Spacewalk. It's called the Super Mover Dolly from Spacewalk. And it <clears throat> it changed my life. But like day one of having it, I'm like, oh, <laughs> like it's a 90 degree angle, right? I'm like, dude, I got a guy that works for me that can weld. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna leave mm -hmm. it at that. Mm -hmm. The manual and I wish Josh was on here because Josh, Josh has been at it for forever and and apparently it, invented uh the the winch on the dolly thing and his youtube video with the winch on the dolly has 150 200 somebody's pages. got a patent on it i'm pretty sure somebody said it's that. josh yeah. it's josh yeah. mm -hmm. i built a badass little winch setup let me see if i got like a video of the steel plate it's kind of ghetto but it looks nice i had someone uh down the road that has a machine that cut out the steel so it looks nice and I yeah, can so drive I've my got, stakes through it. Like, I've got an idea for the whole, like, I, it's in my brain, right? I don't know how to use CAD because I'm not an engineer, and I sure shit don't know how to weld. <laughs> yeah, so, or else, I, else I'd have been in the dolly business. I've sold Spacewalk out of their Supermover dolly every time they've ever got refilled with them until this last time. Like, the question has randomly kind of calmed down, I think, because the videos on my YouTube channel that are more recent aren't using it, but dear Jesus, when we are using it, it was like five times a day. So that's the steel plate. And then on all four corners, you can put like stakes through it. Then, uh, that's it with the winch on it. But now I have it flipped the other way so that oh, that yeah. long piece of steel is flipped the other way. So it like pushes that into the dirt rather than coming up. That oh, thing works yeah. really good. No, I know, I know people That's that cool. literally just weld a giant, like, like you can just weld a giant uh, square tube to it, drill a bunch of like holes through it, and do some tent stakes, like three or four of them. That's all the tent companies do. And I use that like rarely. I have one slide that is just <clears throat> is too much just for me to roll, and whenever it's just me going to get it, <clears throat> that's really the only time I use that thing. That thing. All cool. the other stuff is jump orange, and that stuff is like a feather. That's yeah, bro. Good. My 19, I have, we have a 19 foot titanium that I mm -hmm. bought. I bought for 2000, nah, 2200 bucks, I think, uh, from some dude. Oh, it was a long, weird story. I don't know how I get myself into these long, weird stories, but uh, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, not only do I want it because it's a 19 foot slide and it's good, I need the inventory and it's in great condition, but I'm like, dude, I don't have a jump orange unit. Um, it did not, unlike you guys, it did not rent the best. It did not make the most money. It did well. It did well. It was like a, B minus performer, but dude, moving that thing, my guys can't figure out how to fucking roll it. So if I'm there, we roll <laughs> it, it is weird. It yeah. is weird. If I'm there, we roll it. Like the guys show up the next weekend at the warehouse, like, yo, what's up with titanium? Who rolled titanium? I'm like, who do you think, dude? I was there. They can't fold it right. But, but when I'm there, like, I know how to fold it. Dude, that thing is so, like, it's, it rolls two thirds of the way with no effort. And mm -hmm. then you've got a nice big roll and you go over the big part. And that thing is so easy. Once you figure out how to fold it, yes. It took me forever to figure out the right fold. So you do like this, right? You go over and then this one's like barely. Like mm -hmm. this side's like barely. And it's not because all my guys do everything symmetrical because that's how we do all of our slides. The slide part will barely hang over i like to fold the stair piece get the stairs flat and then yeah. that other side it kind of barely hangs over and then it's yeah. like a little short and fat roll do you yeah, have yeah, youtube yeah. video hey do you have youtube videos showing how to do that not on no, no yeah yeah i we, don't No, we rolled that slide so trevor and i rolled that slide with rolling straps and that is on the youtube channel and i was shooting some b-roll of us folding it but then I didn't end up using any of the B roll, but I think it's still, I think it's still on my GoPro. Uh, but it was like, uh, I had a kind of a janky ass tripod. Like it was a, it was a weird situation where the video that we shot turned out well with the rolling straps, <clears throat> but the B roll wasn't very good. That's why I didn't use any of it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, you guys want to? Uh, I'm good. I got kids. Um, Tariq's thing started nine minutes ago. Yeah, I'm. I'm about to start. I'm about to head to Tariq's thing. Well, yeah, I got so my go, DoorDash coming. Let me see. Let me see if I can get. Uh, so he's talking about IAPA. I believe it's IAPA 101 is his topic. I was going to see if I can find oh, yeah. link. I can find it for you too. Yeah, if you got the link, you can drop into. Uh, if you can drop the link into Zoom, I can put it over in the Facebook. So it says for everyone. Yeah, because I got all sorts of random sh. I just sh- put one link. I, don't, I think it's in That's there. the link to the event. Yeah. I want Facebook. to go to it, but there's no way because I have no idea. My kids may have started a fire. Right, yeah. a I'm going to join the other Zoom later. Peace. All right. So if you, oh, there it is. All right. Justin dropped it in. So let me copy and paste. And you guys can all bounce. And then I'm going to do a little outro for the YouTube folks because this will go to YouTube. Okay. There it is on Facebook. It's already in the Zoom. That's the only place I can put it. I can't put it over there on YouTube. YouTube, go find it. It's over on uh, it's over on uh, Facebook. All right. That that should do it. That should do it for uh, episode six of Booze and Biz. I feel like that was a very good one. I, I feel like it was much smoother. And that's what I was going for. Uh, I think the I topic liked it. hit. Yeah, I think the topics hit well. And uh, I don't know. I'm having a lot of fun with this, so. So, I like being back on camera and hanging out with my buddies. <laughs> uh, that. I'm Amen looking to forward that. to next week. So, so, yeah, next week we're going to go one hour later. We're going to test it one hour later. So we're going to start 7 Central, 8 Eastern, uh, which puts it at 5 Pacific. Uh, we're going to test it a little later. But, uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe to all the things. Smash that like button. You guys know the drill. But anyways, we're out. Peace.